Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time the Podcast and I am your host Cassia Marina. For those of you who are new around here, I am a brand strategist and web designer and me and my team help you and your small business by creating brand assets for your business, brand and marketing graphics. And on today's episode, I will be sharing with you my top lessons of 2023. But I must say that it's not like these are my lessons that started from January to December of 2023. Nothing happens in a vacuum. It's just that in 2023, it's when the clarity came around certain things. Or as they say, things came to a head, but it was lessons that you were slowly building from years previously. All right, so some things might go back before 2023, but I just wanted to mention that. So we are just going to dive straight into it. And that is my first thing I want to just get off my chest, which is social media. And I'm not even sure that it's a lesson of mine per se, but it's something that I wanted to touch on as a lesson in general for all of us to take into 2024. And that thing is social media. Let's talk about social media, the elephant in the room. We're tired, we're exhausted, we're over it, but we know we need it for our businesses. Whether you're an online business, an offline business, um, brick and mortar business, you need to use social media. It's just a must have in today's world. And it's not the be all and end all of what marketing is, but it is a big part of the world today. So if you have a business, you need some level of social media marketing, as little as it may be, right? And this is not to say that you can market your business without it, but it's pretty hard not to have some level of social media strategy, even if that means there's like one simple platform, right? So the one we talk about the most, the one we love to hate on the most, which is Instagram. All right, and I really don't want to spend too much time on this, but it must be addressed. And that is bad talking Instagram. You know, it comes from, in my opinion, a place of lack. And it, it's also very toxic. And coming down to the end of 2023, I just actually had that epiphany that, wait a minute, this is freaking toxic. And I was reflecting on a thread that I would have posted, I don't I don't have it like to reference right now, but anything that I mention, any resources, any links, any definitions, any posts, I will try my best to link all of it in the description of this podcast episode so that you could go like check it out, go down the rabbit hole if you feel like it. But all of it will be there in the show notes. All right. So <sighs> I was reflecting on this post that I made about Instagram. I don't even remember what it was about. Exactly. I really should have pulled that out before I started talking about it. But the point is that post just performed like so well. It was one of my posts that really took off. Well, when I say one of my posts, one of my threads on Instagram threads, the new platform, well, not so new, but um, but yeah, I made this post and it just was just going for days and days and days with people chiming in, liking, sharing, and I got a bunch of new followers. And uh, I noticed a thread, like anytime you talk about Instagram, positive or negative, most times negative, because, you know, human nature, we like to focus on the negative a lot. That's just human nature. Um, when that post, yeah, that we love to talk about Instagram. It's like our favorite thing to gripe about. I can pick up my phone right now and just make a tweet or Instagram story about my latest, you know, Instagram frustration and people without a doubt will engage. They will engage or they will share the post if it's a feed post, like, I am not even worried about that, but I am not an Instagram coach. My main core of my business is not like, you know, I have some Instagram class or group coaching program or anything of those things, of that sort. So it's like, 
it's there's no real reason for me to talk about Instagram more than just sharing a few thoughts here and there or in the context of content creation, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, it's like, I had to reflect on the fact that we just love to talk about Instagram, not even content creation per se, but just Instagram and its changes. And trust me, I get it. Nobody else, like from a online business strategist perspective, somebody who has been online and using this platform for such a long time and it really has given a lot to me and much more to many other people in this space that of course we do feel a little bit like you know like oh you know you all you was you were so good to me and now it's just like it's so hard it's so this it's so that and quite honestly it is toxic, constantly griping about it. And Instagram is always doing something that we're not happy with. All of it is valid. All of it is completely valid. But at what point do we act like business owners and get a grip? Like at what point do we realize that there's so much more to marketing outside of Instagram? There's so much more to digital marketing outside of Instagram. There's so much more to content creation outside of Instagram. There's so much more. Like the point is the bigger picture. There's so much more to building a brand online and, you know, everything that has to do with online and digital besides Instagram. What I'm trying to get home to you here is that Instagram is not the be all and end all to your business's success. And if it is, you need to stop and reflect on that for a moment because that is a red flag. That is concerning. And I would on that note say that even to myself, that I became too dependent on this one platform. It's very easy to become very dependent on one platform because for those of us who don't want to spread ourselves thin, we might actually think it's a good thing, you know, or if you're now getting started with your business, you might think, okay, I can handle one platform. This is the platform that I've chosen for visibility online, and I'm just going to lean all in on one platform. That's why I would say yes, one, but always have at least two so that you're not putting all of your eggs into one basket. But that brings me to my other point. You have to come off, you have to build, you just have to build outside of social media. You either have to have a YouTube. Yes, your YouTube can disappear, yes, but it's still better for SEO um, strategy. You need to build a blog or a podcast or somewhere else, maybe Substack has been really um, been doing well for people in terms of building a newsletter on it, right? You could build a newsletter and it doesn't have to be on Substack. You could just go the old fashioned way. MailChimp, um, there's MailerLite, there's Flowdesk. I'm going to link to all of these things in the description. Some of them will be affiliate slash referral links. Um not all, but I will link to them so you could go check that out. Um, especially for Flowdesk, you get 50% off when you sign up to a paid plan using my link. So that will be in the description. But um, yeah, there's just so many other places that you can put your, your leadership content. The point is I'm speaking mostly to coaches, consultants, service-based businesses. If you're a product-based business, then you should have an e-commerce website in any case and you really should have a newsletter so yes that is my preliminary thoughts on that without putting too much thought into it but you should have a newsletter you know when I first launched my e-commerce store way back in I can't remember like 2019 yeah somewhere around 2019 I just took example of what major re retailers did. I looked at my Walmart. I looked at my, tar well, it wasn't Target at the time, it was mainly Walmart and Amazon. Where do they where, where do they market their stuff as online businesses? Well, Walmart has 
physical storefronts. But at the time, Amazon didn't. I would get emails. So I was like, okay, as an online, purely 100% online business, I need to be reaching my customer some way, somehow. So I want to be in the inboxes, direct, right? Direct contact. We have to think outside of Instagram. So that's the first lesson. You know, the first lesson is that these platforms are changing so quickly and so often that we have to think from a bigger picture perspective. You have to really think like a CEO. You're not on here to have fun and games, right? Yes, you can have fun, but from a business perspective, sit down with pen and paper. Or for those of you who are Notion um, girlies or guys who use Notion, Pull out your notion and really sit down and think of a plan that is sustainable. You don't need, uh, like, it's great to enlist the support and help of marketing consultants and strategists. But without that, you as the CEO of your business, just pull out a notebook and, th and list it all out. Everything that I just called, list it all out and see and put them into categories, include Pinterest, include these different things, even platforms that you aren't familiar with, just brain dump everything and just see that there is so much more to market in your business than just Instagram. All right. I'm going to link to a thread as a, also a point of reference. And this is a thread from Tamiko.Harvey. And she shared a screenshot of the money that she makes through SEO and her blog. All right. Um, she was re she was doing a repost of some another content creator. So we're talking content creators. What I made from brand deals in 2023. And she lists out all the months. January zero, February zero, March zero, April zero, May zero, June zero straight down to December zero. And then she puts, LOL, I'll try again in 2024. Now, obviously not everybody is just making nothing, but the point, this is like a really polarizing post, but the point is the person who shared this post to Miko.Harvey and she shared how much money she made. She has a screenshot of direct deposits, um, with four figure deposits from her blog, right? From her website blog. I feel like it's really a truly a pendulum swing right now where a lot of people are discovering going back to basics. I don't think it's just me alone. You know, it's like your blog is where you control that. It's not changing unless you decide to change it. You're not on the whim and fancy of the ever-changing algorithm whenever Instagram feels to change it up and, and they're telling you, it's like you work for these platforms now. It's like, well, these are the rules. You must put sponsored on your post, but then they're stifling the organic reach of those sponsored posts. And then they're also changing up the features and telling you, uh, reels are out, carousel posts are in. It's it's too much. It's too much. And this brings me to like how I truly feel about social media. It's draining. I no longer, like if you look at my Instagram right now, when was the last time I posted on the feed? Right? When was the last time I posted on the feed? Just one second. Okay, so the last time I posted on the feed, the post that I posted for this year and the end of the year don't count. But honestly, I don't post like as often. Like the last post would have been December 7th. Um, what I posted January 1st doesn't count because I was making my little, you know, New Year post. And then I posted something the other day just to get things going, which was January 16th. Look at how the, the big gaps in between. It's January 16th, January 1st, and then before that, it was December 7th. They, there's no there's no incentive, at least for me right now. I just don't, I don't feel like it. 
Um, I'll still continue to post educational content, but to say like I sit down like I used to back in the day and I would religiously have those posts in queue. Three posts a week are coming out, maybe two at least or maybe more than three, but on average, it was three posts a week and I will sit down and I will batch create either at minimum for the week so that I could go live my life and run my business or I would sit down and plan out 14, 14 days of posts, some, something around that. Or even before that workflow, it would have been, I'd sit down and plan for the whole month. Okay, like these are my topics. This is what people need to know about. This is well, it relates to what I have to offer this month um, or this quarter, et cetera, et cetera. Like everything was planned prepped, ready to go. And then you would get like your Instagram stories that would give like the behind the scenes of your day-to-day, -day, tidbits, shares, whatever. All of that, it's, it's, Instagram is a unique place and I, it personally don't feel like I could keep up with the, the changes all the time. Like I could keep up, like I know what's happening and I keep a pulse on things, but, <sighs> I think I need a whole episode to dive deeper into that. So uh, let's move on. Let's move on. So my next lesson is uh, family, right? My big lesson here is in the genre or the wheelhouse of family and motherhood. And remembering your why. Let's take a moment, right? I need to come down from the Instagram topic. Remembering your why. When I had just, you know, went full-time in my business, decided to lean in, go hard back in 2016, I had a lot more boundaries. And somewhere along the line, you just kind of get caught up in the goals, what other people are doing, the pressures of certain, ending up in certain circles and being influenced by so many external factors. I had a routine and I still do, I still do, right? But I had this routine when my kids were really small, got them to school, mommy mode is on, you wake up, get them out the door, get them to school by around eight. And then from eight to actually I had a lot more time to myself because I had a driver for them because I didn't have a car at the time. So driver would pick them up by 7.30 and then, you know, I'd ease into my morning, have breakfast. You know, I really had a lot of like me time to settle into the day. Now it's a lot more hustle and bustle. Um, had a lot of time to take calls, create content, go live, do all of these things. And then around one, I'll take a nap and wake up around two, three, because my kids will get dropped home by 3.34. So that's a lot of time that I had. Now I need to wrap up what I'm doing by lunchtime so I can actually eat, which plenty of days I don't get to eat. And then by... By 1.30, I have to, like, get ready just to pull out the driveway because I can't, like, get up and be like, oh, 10 minutes to 2 because my son's school over is at 2. I can't, like, be like that. Oh, it's 10 to 2. Let me leave now because it for some reason it takes about 15 minutes to get out the door. Don't ask me how it happens, the time it takes to start up reverse out, da, da 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 like before you know it, 10 minutes has passed. So I have to actually get myself in readiness to do the evening pickup by 2, 1.30. It takes me about 20 minutes to get to school, but I don't like to reach 2 on the dot because I don't like to get jammed up with the other parents. So I wait for that first initial, you know, rush of parents to pick up. They are gone, so it's like 
10 past two, perfect time to swoop in, grab my son, then go get my daughter. Then I reach home at around three-ish, 3.30. Three then I'm in officially mommy mode because, you know, you're doing your evening routine, making sure that they eat, homework, etc., etc. And then I might do some extra work at night or not, <laughs> right? So that is my typical day. And back in the day, there was, like I said, a lot more time. And I had these boundaries. So like between from the time three to seven, I'm not responding to messages. You know, I used to be like a little irritated when people try to call or WhatsApp me, etc. between these times because I really was firm on communicating my boundaries or even responding to emails. And because I love my work so much, it used to be really hard to pull away. Like I'm there still trying to sneak responding to emails or somebody's disturbing my peace. <laughs> because they're saying something crazy um so I really had to like put down the phone and that took some practice and it took a while but for the most part it was like really good boundaries somewhere along the line especially as demands grow life shifts and again you're in these circles I really lost sight of truly being present so you see that time between three to seven, that was off limits. It was actually three to seven, three to eight, there about. That time I was off limits. I find myself now of late for a couple of years. Well, I'm there in the room, but I'm not fully present. It's so hard to pull away. Especially now with short form content, you're scrolling on TikTok, you're scrolling on Reels and everything is going so fast. And it's like, if you are offline for a day, it's like you missed out on what's the latest happening in the online space so that you could keep a pulse on things and weigh in. It's so, so much. And somewhere along the line, I had to get a reality check. <sighs> All right. So I had to take a deep breath because I have in my notes here that I really promised that I would open up only here on this podcast episode because it's 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 hard to really make the impact that you want on the topic without being vulnerable and sharing, right? And of course, I really am not going to probably tell all, all, but let's just say that a lot of distance, I would say, kind of grew from the pandemic between me and my daughter. She, both of us struggled, but in ways that were different. And while I was struggling with my own mental health, it was really hard to always be the best parent that you could be or the best mother that you could be because you you have to deal with your own ish as well. And not to not to beat up on myself too much as a mother because the, I must recognize that there were many times that I recognized where her mental health was suffering as an extroverted child. I made adjustments when necessary and where possible, which is, for example, me getting the F out of Trinidad the moment the borders were open with one of them because of how much being stuck indoors would have affected her. Like there were several different things. But one of the things is we must touch on is digital, the digital space. You know, I am, I, one of the things I had to realize is that I, my daughter is not me. And I thought it was so cool that, you know, Web3 was big and, you do Discord and all of these different things. And, you know, we hear so much about safety online and this and what your kids are being exposed to. And there's just things that I missed because I over-trusted. Um, I thought that, oh, this is great. You're in these years where you could just eat up this information. You're going to learn so much online. And but that's because that's my nature. My nature is that I am an information finder. That's just in my nature. As a, if I have a question, I'm going to Google it. If I 
I just have these random questions in my mind. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to read about it. I'm going to teach myself. I taught myself so many things off of YouTube. And coming from an era where we didn't have the information age, then coming into the information age, I find it so cool and exciting. And it's like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. Like, you know, you could, you know, use Discord to learn how to code and you could learn how to this and you could use YouTube to learn how to that. And I was just hoping that she would find these things on her own because I grew up finding things on my own because I grew up in a household where my grandmother couldn't really teach me any about these things. She could sew, she could teach me to cook, she could teach me to knit, she could teach me to sew. But when it came to things on an academic level, she didn't go to high school. So when it came to certain mindsets, these are things I had to learn and teach myself. So there were a lot of things that I missed. And I also, again, so consumed in my device, so consumed in showing up online and so consumed in these screens because, you know, you have to show up for the client, you have to answer the email, you have to scroll social media to know what's happening with social media. Um, it's just... It's just so hard to pull away when this is your work. And while I'm here physically with them, I plenty of the time is mentally checked out. One of my biggest, biggest, biggest regrets because I would never forget the time when she was asking me some questions about a pretty sensitive topic. And I was answering her, but it was kind of difficult for me to like talk about the topic, to be honest. And then like I answered and there was something that I said where she was like, well, I'm never going to tell you or something, something, something. And then she was like, um, there was another time she was asking me something and I really missed the moment. It was an important moment to just bond. And she's like, you never like to talk. And she stormed off when she gone. And I will never forget that. I feel, feel like looking back, that was like a turning point because... I find that she has a hard time opening up. And that has been something I have been working extra hard. So you might find I'm not online as much. You might find, especially during December, I might not have been online like that. And I've, you, you'll see like a lot of content that's very homey and nourishing. Yes, I'm in my soft girl era. And I, I'm all about like rest and wellness and whatnot. But a lot of that, especially in the end of last year, came from wanting to focus more on home. So all of that to get to the point of one of my biggest lessons is not being more present. Um, the lesson here is coming from a digital online expert is that we can't take the safety side of the online space for granted you know um we can't trust that our kids will be like us because they are growing up in a different age and era and you really 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 have to make the time and sometimes it's hard especially just simply being an adult it's really challenging sometimes to set aside the time not just to be present but to be intentional about building the relationship especially as they grow older, the approach to your parenting really has to change and not to make this like a whole parenting episode. But that is my lesson. It's all around motherhood and family. And I am so, 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 so super intentional, not just about systems and streamlining the business and being strategic about how I spend my time where business is concerned, but being more mindful and being intentional with that side of life as well home family real world offline relationships all right so that brings me to my next point which is i'm smiling because i said that and i didn't i said that without realizing what um the next point was which is online relationships are fleeting right um emily 
Dela Cruz had a thread. And I'm wanna, I want to pause. That one I definitely want to pull up, right? Be right back. And I'll link to it in the description. Okay, awesome. So I found the post. I was a little worried there for a second that I wasn't going to find it because she posts often. I was like, oh, crap, I'm not going to find this post. All right, so let me read it. Let me read it. So Emily De La Cruz said, I am going to say something plainly. I've been having the same conversation over and over around the topic. Finding community in a new city is hard, right? So it's open quotes. Finding community in a new city is hard, close quotes. But you know what? But you know what makes it especially hard? When the digital connections, pay attention to this part, when the digital connections that you had online didn't translate into friendships in real life. It's a mind fuck. You realize the people that you followed and engaged with already have their core friend group slash routine and aren't necessarily looking for new connections. Now, that was really refreshing to read from someone who you would think would have a big enough pool of people to, you know, hang out with or build relationship on. Like, they shouldn't be suffering with loneliness. They have such a huge platform. Um, they should, like, you You would expect, it's not just about numbers online, obviously, but, you know, you see them doing a bunch of cool stuff. They, you know, have quite a network. And Hannah say this was like so refreshing because as someone coming from the Caribbean who has managed to make a lot of, you know, what, 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 what did you say? Connections, right? Digital connections herself. Sometimes, you know, the people that you expected to constantly stay in touch with because I've met up with a lot of them, like quite a handful, quite a few. So I'm not disappointed in that aspect, but does that translate to more deeper, long-term connections? You know, it's like you still know each other, but everything is just so fleeting. Um, You know, it's just like, I don't know, like, you might be listening to this and thinking, well, Cassie, why are you so stupid? I think, da 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 But I mean, I am the type of person who just not about, I just not about that fake life. Like, if we are talking for a while or we're engaging and, you know, if I say, hey, come to my city, like, I'm going to mean that. I'm not just going to say that to people. And I recognize that not everybody is like you. Same way, like, your children are not going to be like you, not because they're your children. Like, we know these things. <laughs> like, we know these things in theory. But do we really embody the understanding of it? Right? Um. So, that was really a a good lesson there but it's not just about it from that perspective but more just on a whole that we have to nurture relationships in real life like that's basically what i'm getting at you have to nurture relationships in real life and sometimes it's hard to do that when you are building an online business like for us caribbean people who you're on an island it's easier to probably nurture those relationships because we're all in the same. Let's let's talk in the context of first world countries like USA. You might be able to nurture relationships in your small town, your small city. But how do you nurture these relationships if you never meet these people? Or, you know, like it's not to say that you can't have real real relationships with people online. I'm not saying that in the least. But generally speaking, these relationships are fleeting. And that is where we also have to get a grip on reality, where nothing is wrong with having these online relationships, but just don't get confused. Don't get confused. Don't get it twisted. Still nurture your relationships. Preserve them um, in real life. And that brings me to a conversation I was having with Stephanie, who talked about parasocial relationships. So let me read the meaning of parasocial relationships before I continue. Right? 
If you've made it this far in the episode, I just want to take a moment to thank you for supporting me. If you have made it this far and you're enjoying what you are hearing, definitely please share this episode with a colleague, a friend, or on your social media channels. If you like the topic and you know you feel like, hey, this is a really good topic, I need to share this. By all means, please share it. And also leave a review, leave your feedback, especially if you're listening on Spotify, there's an option to give feedback on an episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Any way that you could further engage with the podcast, I would really love to, I would really appreciate it. And I also love hearing from you. So feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Instagram and let me know your thoughts. All right. So parasocial relationships, the term Parasocial relationship refers to a relationship that a person imagines having with another person whom they do not actually know, <laughs> such as a celebrity, emphasis on celebrity, or a fictional character, right? Pay attention to the word celebrity. I'm sure you've come across the term celebrity coaches, you know, even celebrity, you know, um service providers like they are the person you want to work with like that's the it girl that's the it web designer or the social media strategist everybody's working with her she has you know 20k and more followers you know they're, they're doing all these things and you want to be a part of that forget just the portfolio or just finding somebody who is a right fit for you based off of other different factors. No, you want to be in the circle, right? So continue, right? We're not done with the definition. All right, this often involves a person feeling as though they have a close, intimate connection with someone whom they have never met due to closely following that person. All right, so I'm going to read that part Again, this often involves a person feeling as though they have a close, intimate connection with someone who they have never met due to closely following that person or character in media, such as TV shows, videos, podcasts, etc., parasocial relationships are often discussed in the context of social media right? Like this, like we are discussing right now and other online platforms that allow celebrities, we're using the word celebrity loosely, which is basically a public figure, right? The public figure, which allows public figures to directly interact with fans and followers or appear that they do. Through parasocial relationships, no, not through, though parasocial relationships are often considered common, they may be considered unhealthy when they become extreme enough to interfere with real life relationships or daily life now you might think oh my gosh it's not that serious um that's not me but overall at, on the very least sometimes we subconsciously don't recognize how much we get caught up in you know the online space which is why you know, it might seem weird that as someone who loves tech and who is so much into the digital space, you may or may not know that I'm not a huge fan of being so digital as it relates to AI, um, the metaverse and all of these different things and just turning into real life avatars. I feel like it's too much. Personally, I still... Um, how to put it? I am cautious of the Web3 evolution of the internet. I feel like Web2 still has like a really healthy-ish balance once you know how to have boundaries. But I'm not a big fan of the avatars. I'm not a big fan of just basically, it feels like we're er erasing what it means to be human. Right. And this is why I'm emphasizing offline relationships, offline events. Not that I'm no longer 
someone who is helping you build your brand online. It's just that now more than ever, the more we get disconnected due to digital, the digitalization of life, even more so now than ever, we need to find a healthy balance and a healthy blend. So it's as simple as just taking the time to recognize that, hey, I have these relationships online, but I value my family, I value my friends, I value my colleagues that I actually meet up with and have coffee ever so often. I feel like it's very important to still maintain doing simple things like having coffee dates and going to in-person events or hosting your own in-person events so that you could still, I don't want to use it to build community, but stay in community and still keep a grip on freaking reality, <laughs> right? So I'm going to move on to my next point. I have a couple of lessons. I might not share all of them um, because I'll make it too long and I'm really not interested in making this a two-part series episode, right? So one of the disclaimers I meant to say at the beginning of this episode is that this is going to be a long one and unapologetically so. <laughs> All right, so what is the next one I'm going to get into here is leaning in Okay, putting it all into perspective. I honestly can't remember what that meant, but <clears throat> it also follows another point, which is now is the time to lean into your gifts. Okay, um, you need to find going circling back to point number one about social media is don't feel like you have to do business any certain way. I know it's so hard to... I just sound sound weird, but think for yourself because we are bombarded with so much messaging. Again, you open the TikTok app and you see 20 videos in five minutes. You know, there's just so much information. Like, it's no joke. Like, we say it's the information age, but it's ridiculous. And I even wonder if it's even the information age because, not because you're getting information means that it's actually good information if you know what i mean we're getting a lot of chatter we're getting a lot of opinion you know we're getting a lot of messaging but is it really real information so anyway that's a whole other thought process for another time but like lean into your gifts for example i like to talk in long form perfect example is this long podcast I like to talk in long form. Um, I send long voice notes. You know, I I tried vlogging for another example and it's not authentic for me, all right? So I'm remembering what this one was supposed to be about. And my lesson of last year is to lean into my gifts. So often we might feel ridiculed. You know how many memes are there about people who send long voice notes? The people who send long voice notes should just start a podcast. Well, psych. Jokes on you because I already have a podcast. Anyway, um, but yeah, I like to talk in long form where whether that is a 20 minute YouTube video on average um, or writing a blog because I'm an introvert and sometimes writing works for me to get my thoughts out on paper. Um, it overall and a whole long form allows you to really share your perspective thoroughly on a point. So often you could come on stories and say something, but there's no context. That's another issue with social media. Like people say one line and nothing's wrong with that, but then people go off in the comments and just take that one line totally out of, out of context because there wasn't enough characters to give full context. And that's another thing that really turned me off of Instagram because personally, even as a consumer, people would put out these posts and it's like, I feel like this urge to come on and tell you all like, yo, don't listen to X, Y, and Z. And when I say X, Y, and Z, not so much the creator, but 
the internet is circling with this perspective right now, but you don't have a holistic perspective on what this really means. I hope that makes sense without going into an example, but, you know, for example, they might say something like, um, oh, I can't think of anything at the moment, but, you know, the, the popular coaches will say, you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z, and it's like, I know where they're coming from, but not everybody understands holistically what they mean and what they're really coming from. And then I personally would have a quick thought myself and it's like, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. So if I come on and I say something about, oh, I'm so sick of content creation, that could be read so many different ways. So I, I restrain myself from saying a lot of things lately. And not because I'm afraid to speak on it. It's that I want to give proper perspective. I would rather just sit on and write a blog post. That's much easier, you know? And then, or even if like I give my thoughts on X, but I have a blog post to, to back it up. So I'm not like spending all this time online explaining to people what I meant. Like, yes, I love having engaging conversation in the DMs, but I don't want to be having full-on blog post conversations in the DMs, you know? And then you're explaining that point in this DM and then you're explaining that point in that DM. It's not a good use of time and it's not it's not efficient overall. And this is where I realized that Juma Bannister actually said this as well. If you know who he is, um, then you know who I'm referring to. And if not, I'll also link to his profile so you could get familiar but short form content is kind of killing I'm paraphrasing here of course um but he says something along the lines of uh short form content is killing it's kind of killing content creation you know it, it's also killing us something to that degree but when I read that that was a realization that I myself had and why I stopped like sharing certain things sporadically because there's only so much I could say, which I have no issue coming on stories and giving you the little ants. You know, you know, they call it up in the stories where you have like so many stories. It looks like an ant trail. Like I have no issue doing that. But then, um, I mean, I'm exaggerating. I don't do those anymore. But if I don't mind like, okay, doing like five to seven st one minute stories going in on a particular topic, but then I also resent giving Instagram all of my quote unquote best content. Like I, again, I would rather just hop on a podcast or write a blog post and keep because long form content, I really feel like should not be on a platform like Instagram. Like, why are you giving these platforms your best content? And when I say your best content is you took time to create this long form piece of content. To me, that's like, your best content. You took your time, you articulated your thoughts, you did research, you formulated a perspective. And, you know, like, I just feel like that stuff really shouldn't be on Instagram. Instagram is just a place to distribute it. You break it up into bite-sized pieces of content and you distribute it like breadcrumbs, you know? Um, so that's just me. Like, that's me. I, I have resentment for doing think pieces on Instagram now. So back to the point. The point is leaning on your gifts, right? Don't fight it. Don't feel like, oh, this is cringe or that people won't get it. Like right now, like I'm pushing through and powering through feeling like this episode is too long because as much as I like long form, I still like to be mindful of the listener. But for this episode in particular, if you find value in it enough to listen to the whole thing, then awesome. And if not, that's cool too. Um, I know I have a lot of great things planned in the upcoming episodes. The format will evolve uh, a tad, um, having certain guests on. So I have a certain vision for it and I just needed to like kind of close the curtain on 2023 by sharing the lesson. So 
listen, anytime somebody asks me a question on these topics, I will be forwarding them to the episode because I said it here. So you could go listen to that if you want to hear my thoughts on content creation and Instagram and all of that. It's right here in this episode. So again, back to the point. If you are someone who does really well with short form and that works for you, then lean in on it. I tried the vlogging and I don't regret trying to vlog in 2023 because it showed me that this isn't for me. At least not right now. Maybe next day it might be, maybe later in the year vlogging might be for me. But for right now, I am still sticking with YouTube. So that's a little insight. I have some, I, I really shouldn't even talk about it too soon. But the point is, my format for YouTube, I just needed to like fine tune a couple of things. And I figured out how I want to approach YouTube. And I tried vlogging and I'm grateful for the experience because it taught me, uh -uh. that doesn't come natural to me. It is not authentic to me. I am going back to what works for me. Right? So you'll know what that is when I start consistently posting on YouTube. I have a goal of what my YouTube um, routine would look like. And I'm not going to share it because i rather like show rather than tell and be about it. Um, so yeah, that's that's um, lesson number. I'm not, I'm not sure what, but that was the next lesson. The next lesson is, I mean, that lesson in a nutshell is lean in on your gifts so whatever your gift is don't fight it lean into it if sitting in your car and ranting <laughs> I, I i'm air quotes works for you and in your car is where the content flows then by all means lean into it lean into it meaning that format works but you might just need to clean it up and figure out, okay, what is the strategy? Where am I going to place this? Okay, car rants is my thing. Where do I really want to place the videos? Do I want to have a link where people can subscribe to a newsletter so they can stay updated with my car rants? Think about what happens after they watch that video. So that's what I mean by leaning on your gifts, but just fine tune the intentionality behind it. All right, so I am going to wrap up this podcast episode with this last lesson slash reflection of 2023. And that is, I believe that this is not me alone, but many of us are unlearning many things from the online space. Everything that that coach taught you, um, and it's not just like the coaches, but the online chatter that came from coaches and then it became an echo chamber of whatever that was taught. And I knew that I did a thread on this and I listed a whole bunch of stuff. I really should pull up that thread as well. Um, all right. So I found a post. And it reads, majority of us could benefit from unloading a lot of things we learned about business online in the past few years. I sure did. I've been getting back to basics all year and slowly purging and unlearning a lot of harmful ideologies. Yeah, my lesson that I would like to share with you all is some of the frameworks that is taught online doesn't work for everyone. It also doesn't take into consideration a person's unique background and then they will tell you that you didn't do the work, right? And as much as that is something that I might similarly say sometimes to certain clients, because rightfully so, some people don't actually give something uh, a full shot or try you have to be willing to be teachable because some things are just really not dependent on your unique background but when it comes to the online space specifically that you would just come on post exactly like this you're going to speak exactly like this you're going to send these emails exactly like this. You're going to have these email templates to sell your offer. 
this is different to having email templates to set up an email sequence for email marketing that you can obviously you on you should be editing the template to suit your purposes and your business. And so many people are selling these quote-unquote frameworks or they set, they're selling this program. And of, of course, if you're doing a group coaching program, you're going to need to have a framework. I have no problem with frameworks. It's just a lot of the frameworks online don't work for everyone. And a lot of us would benefit from going back to basics. Keep that part in mind. It's not to discredit people with frameworks. It's not to say that frameworks don't work. Actually, anybody who is really good at their craft usually have a framework that's rinse and repeatable to get a specific result. But a lot of the business coaches or consultants or marketers would act as though, hey, follow this framework and you will make X amount of dollars or you will blow up in this way and you will grow an audience and all these different things. And in all honesty, nobody could guarantee those kind of results when we live in a world that, like look at the pandemic, for example. There was so much talk around diversity and equity and inclusion. The world is diverse but in the workplace, it is not. Um, the world is diverse, but in the online space, it also is not. It favors people who live in certain places, live a certain way, look a certain way, speak a certain way. And the persons who are coming online teaching you certain things do not have the experience that you have. They are not living your lived experience. You might have to read between the lines for that one. If it resonates, it resonates. And if it doesn't, then it probably doesn't apply to you. But we have to take the fact that, I don't know if you ever read the book Pride and Prejudice, or even if you didn't read it, you might be familiar with what it talks about. The fact that it matters, we live in a prejudice world and simply coming online, being you and who you are, may not translate to the same results that somebody else is getting because they look a certain way, they come from a certain background, they have different even resources, support, help, lifestyle, especially when we come from just recently, there was just so much lifestyle marketing. How am I supposed to follow your framework when your lifestyle looks like X? So then people are posing in certain ways and rent well not so much in Trinidad but people still pose no matter where you live but people are acting a certain way and then you're doing the brand shoots to make you look crisp and shiny and it's not really reality for many people um so this is where I'd even close off by saying one yes go back to basics but two Going back to basics could simply mean building a business the old school way. Building a company brand and building the business off of a company brand. That is a whole other episode by itself. And I have thoughts on that, especially as someone who has built her business using personal branding. And I understand how much personal branding helps and boosts any business. But it definitely has its pros and cons. And same for building from scratch, a company brand, it definitely has its pros and cons as well. And I'm not going to like come on here and come on the internet. I can no longer in, with integrity come on and act like building a personal brand or building a business off of your personal brand is all that they make it out to be. All right. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed that full cup of tea. I am going to close off this episode. I would love to hear the thoughts. As I said, if you've made it this far in the episode, definitely hit me up in the DMs. I would love to get your feedback on it. And if you found that this podcast was helpful or useful in any way, definitely share it with another like-minded individual, colleague, friend, and business owner. All right. Until the next episode, have a good one.